Well, now we know who's driving for who, even if we aren't exactly happy about who is driving. But at the time of shooting, both the McLaren and Alfa Tauri cars for 2021 have been unveiled. And the McLaren, the MCL 35M and the Williams, which this year is the FW43B, have both been out doing shakedown laps at Silverstone. Mercedes have already fired up what's probably going to be their winner for 2021. And in the next few days, or at least when we're shooting this, Alfa Romeo will be whipping the covers off of their competitor for 2021. You could pretty much say that the 2021, ugh, the 2021 season, said that many, too many times already, is underway. The season is underway, so uh, it's time to predict what's going to happen in 2021. We'll start with the constructors, and here the tides have been turning over the years, unless of course you're Mercedes, in which case you're a bit like a King Knut standing on the shores, and the tides are actually doing your beck and call. But if you're fighting anything from second place and below, it's a bit of a maelstrom of chaos. The cut and thrust politics of Formula One, the backdoor dealings, have seen teams grow, wilt, falter, and find new footing. And hopefully this chaos will continue on into the 2021 season and we'll see a hotly contested battle for that prestigious second place. Because we pretty much know who's going to be coming first, don't we? I could be surprised, but I think we know. Working our way up the rankings, we'll start at the bottom with Haas. And um, they've been on a bit of a downward trajectory for a while. Their development hasn't been as strong as we've seen with the Williams and the Alpha Tauri. And this year, as they have a completely new driver lineup, it's going to be quite unpredictable. They've got Mick Schumacher and another person. Maybe a fresh start is what the team needed, but uh, I'm a massive Grosjean fan. And I reckon that if he had seen the same luck and career path that Perez had seen, um, we could have seen a lot more, more from him, really. And the same could pretty much be said for Kevin Magnussen as well. He always seemed to have this unlucky sort of move to a team just as that team was beginning to dip. And um, it never really gave him that solid platform to embed his name into the world of Formula One or nowhere near as much as he would have liked anyway. Nonetheless, Haas, in my mind at least, will get to the end of the 2021 season in last place. Ahead of them, and hopefully with a new wind behind them, will be Williams. Uh, this year, they have had a car ready for a few shakedown runs at Silverstone, which, when compared to what we saw in Drive to Survive at one point when they arrived at testing with 80% of a car, um, this is a bit of a step forward for them, really. A new financial backing, new technical direction, a drive lineup that is now experienced and gelled with the team. They know how it works, Latifi and Russell get on well, they got on well with the team, everything is quite cohesive now. So hopefully this all hints at Williams that with some performance aspirations they could actually live up to this season coming. And um, last season we saw a car that was capable of getting into Q2 and scrapping for points on a Sunday. Admittedly it never claimed any points, but that's this year's task for them, I should think, to try and get some points in a Williams. And um, Latifi has proven himself to be a reliable and risk-averse driver. I say that as quite an odd statement, despite F1 being quite risky in its nature. But his driving on track is sensible and measured, and it has seen him finish more races than Russell has. Um, draw from that what you will. And um, yeah, that does actually balance out quite well with the very hard pushing Russell. And he doesn't just push the car hard, he's pushing himself hard. And I think when we get onto the driver's lineup, uh, we'll talk about that a bit more. If you break down their finishes from last season, you'll actually see that I think Latifi did out, outplace Russell if you ignore Russell's stint in uh, the W11 in Secure. So fingers crossed we will see some better performances from Williams in the 2021 season and that they will, at the end of it, outrank Haas. Hopefully. Q1 
Call me a moron, but I reckon we'll see a strong performance from the Alfa Romeo outfit this season. No one knows when Kimi's last season will be, but he's not starting to take it easy or wind down at all. Um, Portimao last year is a brilliant example of a man who is not going to be giving up on this sport for some time. Um, absolute flyer of Mike McNabb. And I don't think the C41 is going to be a dud. They've called it the C41 this year. It was C39 last season. For some reason, they've skipped calling it a C40. So we've gone straight to C41. And um, the C39 wasn't tremendous, but it was manageable. And with some decent evolution on it, I think the C41 could be a very potent midfield attacker. Whether it's going to score points is going to be a different matter. But... Um, We'll have to see, and hopefully it will be enough to keep Alpha competing against the other Alpha of Alpha Tauri. And um, this is where things get tricky to start trying to pull apart, because I reckon from here on up to about third place, it's going to be a very tightly fought competition for F1.5. And um, it's going to be the hottest season in the middle midfield than ever before, I reckon. And um, with the new talent of the pocket-sized Yuki Tsunoda and Pierre Gasly, who seems to be on a mission to piss off Horner and Marco with some absolutely punchy performances. Um, Alfa Tauri could be on for a closer finish to the pack in 2021 than they had been last year. In 2020, there were 24 points adrift of sixth place Ferrari. This year, I reckon they'll be a lot closer to sixth place. Speaking of sixth place, that's going to be Alpine by my measure. Uh, Renault didn't do too badly last season. They were only 14 points behind Racing Point, and I reckon they'll be close again, actually, probably even closer. The Renaults, and now Alpines of late, have been getting better. Their evolution of the car over the years has been pretty phenomenal, actually. They've come a long way in the past few seasons, and the team has come together to be a proper unit as well. It's not just the mechanical side of the car, the actual team behind it appears to be working and working well. Um, they got new direction this year because I think they said goodbye to Cyril Abitbul, didn't they? So they might have new direction this year, which could even boost them further. We'll have to wait and find out. And um, so we've got a proper unit of a team with a decent car. And um, if Alonso can integrate well into that team, then we should see some competitive performances from them. And uh, that would leave them right on the tails of Aston Martin. Pull apart their performance last season and it makes you doubt what will happen with the Silverstone-based outfit. Perez scored nearly 65% of their points. And um, when you sort of bear that in mind, especially when you missed out on two races and retired from a third one, you missed out the two British Grand Prix, wasn't it? And you retired from Abu Dhabi. So that's a decent showing to have racked up 65% of your team's points. The question is, can Vettel match that level of performance in his first year at a new team? A bit of doubt starts to creep in. And to make matters worse, I reckon Seb's new outfit will be beaten by his former team. Ferrari. Sainz and Leclerc should be a good pairing, with somewhat different driving styles, one being younger than the other, one being less experienced than the other. Um, it's a recipe that we saw with Seb and Charles, but that never really came to fruition. Maybe now Ferrari will have learned how to coach and how to manage such a driver lineup. And they might have also found out what was wrong with the SF1000 and its 065 power unit, because it was just shocking. The problem is, while they were floundering, trying to figure out what's wrong with their car, it has provided a bit of an open door. McLaren, who went into 2020 with a strong car and a well-assembled team, now they have the upgraded power unit in the form of the Mercedes M12, However, that isn't an immediate recipe for success. Williams have been running Mercedes power units since 2014, and while initially they did start strong, as the rule changes rolled out, they struggled to adapt to the changing package and have since suffered. And this is Williams, one of the greatest names in F1 history. If they can't get it together, then I feel we should probably not jump to conclusions as to how McLaren might get on with it. Otherwise, you could look a bit silly if you sort of go, McLaren Mercedes is going to be amazing. It's going to be like Lewis Hamilton's start of his career all over again. They're going to be an amazing car at the front of the grid. And then if you're wrong, you'll look like a bit of an idiot, which is what I don't want to do. So that's sort of why I'm hedging my bets that the Woking outfit will match their performance from last year. They will come home third on the uh, points table. 
but I reckon they might have a bigger gap to fourth place. Last year they finished seven points ahead of, um, I think it was Racing Point, wasn't it? Pete? Yeah, Racing Point that they finished ahead of. They had a gap of seven points ahead. I reckon they will have a bigger lead in 2021. But I doubt that they'll usurp Red Bull from their second place. Perez and Verstappen will be the most competitive driver pairing on the grid, akin to Bottas and Hamilton or Vettel and Weber. Um, if they can have both drivers crossing the line, nose to tail, race in, race out, then the fight between Red Bull and Mercedes is bound to be a spicy one. And um, it, it should be lined up for an absolutely fantastic season at the front as well as in the midfield. And of course, that just leaves Mercedes as the winners. Uh, I don't think this is an exceptionally risky prediction, and it's not an exceptionally clever prediction either. It's just the, the, the sensible choice, really, isn't it? Um, I can't see Mercedes making that big of a drop in performance or that big a series of mistakes in 2021 that they don't win the season. And um, yeah, it will be more interesting. I reckon we'll see a much closer finish between the two teams. They won't wrap it up as early as they did last season where they won at Imola, wasn't it, with still had, was it, four races left to go on the calendar. Um, I reckon it could go a lot closer to the wire with a hotter Red Bull on their tail. But with Hamilton looking to force the FIA into starting a whole new record book to cover his accomplishments, and Bottas version will be on 3.0 now, filled with porridge and hatred for the back of the W12, which will be staring up weekend, weekend, and weekend after weekend, um, we'll see both drivers pushing hard. When this leads to a series of mistakes is yet to be seen, maybe we'll finally have a Mercedes driver battle to rival 2016. So that wraps up the constructor standings, but it's time to take a look at the drivers. Back at the grid comes Mick Schumacher's teammate, and then it's going to be Nicholas Latifi. And I would like Nicholas Latifi to do better, um, but I don't think he'll quite have the edge against Mick Schumacher, who I'm putting in at 18th. And I'm putting a lot of hype into Mick Schumacher. I reckon that he will have the skill set and the ambition to drag what is probably going to be a really, really naff pass um, somewhere off the back of the grid. I reckon he could do it. I reckon he'll do a better job of extracting performance from it than the other Haas driver. Um, and I reckon that he might outplace Latifi. Um, that's not to say I don't have faith in Latifi. He is growing on me as a driver, actually, and as a character. Um, quite warm to him, but there we go. I think it's going to back back of the grid is going to go some guy Latifi, Mick Schumacher, and then we'll move on to reach forward to move up my list. Kimi, um, he's only here because I reckon he'll be outdone by his teammate Antonio Giovinazzi, and I back Antonio. Um, mainly because I, I I absolutely love the guy and I want to see more of him. He's he wasn't FD, he wasn't Ferrari driver academy, but he just ended up doing sim stuff for Ferrari and testing for Ferrari. He did. He was the reserve driver for Haas for a period of time and then he eventually got his seat at Salva Alfa Romeo. And I want to see more of him. And I reckon 2021 could be the year where we see him put in a big push to outperform Kimi Raikkonen. And then hopefully, just ahead of Antonio Giovinazzi in 15th place, will be Mr. Saturday. And uh, hopefully he will convert those amazing performances into some points this season. I would love to see George Russell score some points in a Williams as well. To see that Williams crossing line and earning points, even if it's one or two here or there, it will be such an achievement for the Williams team and a massive boost in spirits. It would be nice to see them doing well. He's, we, British people would love an underdog. And I think at this point in time, Williams are a lovable underdog. And equally this year, they do have a better car under them. It's already been out. It's already been doing its shakedown laps. And if it's an improvement on last year's car, it should be looking competitive indeed. Next up is a man who's barely taller than the car he is driving, Yuki Tsunoda. I don't get how they're going to actually... They must fit like pedal extensions or something to his car, move the pedal box further forward. This guy is so small. He's one, just shy of 1.6 metres tall, um, which means that he's only about 30 centimetres taller than an emperor penguin which is impressive. But anyway, that's besides the point. It's his first season in Formula 1. I don't want to put too much pressure on him, um, but I reckon this is where the hotly 
thought part of the grid starts. So if he's mixing it with the best of F1.5, the competitive teams, with Alpha Tauri, the ATO2, isn't it? Which actually looks pretty good. The renders look naff. The real life photographs of the car look stunning, actually. I really like this sort of smart and blue and white paint scheme. But anyway, um, yeah, the points gaps here are going to be one or two points between places. And if we can get Yuki getting some points, that'd be impressive. I reckon there's probably even going to be some ties on points this season as well. Uh, just ahead of Yuki Tsunoda for the 13th and 12th place, it's Alonso and Ocon, respectively. It's the Alpine boys, and I do think Ocon is going to outpace Fernando Alonso this season. Um, a year out from F1 can hit hard. We've seen drivers sort of take a year out and try and come back, and they haven't been at the top of their game. It's a hard sport to come back into physically, and add in that cycling injury recently, it could be tricky for Alonso to come back, and I think it's just going to give... Esteban Ocon, the little edge he needs, that little bit of motivation to say, I can do it this season. And he could well do. I think this year the Alpine's called the A521, which just sounds like a road in the UK. But anyway, Alonso and Ocon, 13th and 12th. And then just outside the top 10, it's Ocon's main rival, Pierre Gasly. And um, if we see the same ferociously competent performance from Pierre this season, then he should do well. Although in 2020 he did finish 10th, uh, his points haul was bolstered by that win in Monza, where he sort of made, he, he earned that in part from skill. I'm not going to sort of say that he only won it because of that slip up from Mercedes and Hamilton's penalty, but because there was the skill of nailing those last few laps, of clawing first position and keeping a hold of it and laying down some absolutely perfect laps in the dying part of that race. Amazing, and you can't fault his skill there, but equally some part of it does come down to his luck. And obviously the incredible foresight and planning from Franz Tost and the team at Alpha Tauri. So hopefully if we see that level of cohesion and performance, we should see a strong performance from Pierre Gasly, and I reckon 11th. Next up is a man who has a lot of pressure on his shoulders, paired with a four-time world champion and bringing back a prestigious name in 2021. Uh, he has some big asks on his shoulders, and uh, that man is Lance Stroll. Hopefully we'll see more of the same from uh, what we saw last season with, again, some highly competent performances on the track. And um, hopefully we will see uh, Lance Stroll at 10th place, halfway up the grid, but with some good points on his record. And then it's a bit of a bold call, or not necessarily bold, potentially pessimistic. Um, Carlos Sainz will finish ninth. And while I have some faith in Ferrari that they will get their car sorted out, I feel that it might still have some rough edges, a bit like the SF90, where it was brilliantly quick in a straight line, but suffered terribly in the turns. And um, I think Charles will be more familiar with that sort of a setup from Ferrari, and Carlos might not sort of bond with it as well. And that could be why we see a few places dropped from Carlos that we weren't expecting, just because he doesn't bond with the car as well. And then besting his former teammate now with Mercedes Power, it's Lando Norris. If he finishes here at eighth place, that is an improvement on his ninth place from 2020. Strong and stable improvements, that's what we like to see. And obviously it's going to take time to get used to a new power unit, to get used to its delivery. Um, he might sort of stumble for the first few races. He might not. He might absolutely pick it up in testing. They might get all the bugs out of the system. Who knows? Seventh place is a man with a lot to recover. It's Sebastian Vettel. He'll be going into 2021 with effectively a clean slate. Um, there is a lot of pressure on that man, though. And But you don't become a four-time world champion without knowing how to handle pressure. So, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes, but it is a very condensed part of the grid. There are not a lot of gaps to try and sort of slot people in, I reckon. There's going to be points, very few points between places. So one slip up could see you drop a few places and um, one spin armor and we don't know what's going to happen. Hopefully up very strong, but 2021 season in store is uh, Charles Leclerc. Again, he put in a very mature um, start to 2020 in that absolute tractor of a Ferrari and um, hopefully that sort of maturity will translate into a lot more points this year so fingers crossed there 
I think we're going to see a big drive from Daniel Ricciardo this season and in those to come as well. He's on an absolutely outstanding form. When you look at his results in the Renault last season, we saw a man who, when he finished a race, I think there was only three occasions he finished outside of the points. And now we've brought him into a team that seems to have it together. They have a brilliant chassis, new Mercedes grunt and reliability, and a good driver lineup to sort of support him through. There is no reason for Ricciardo to not carry on this absolutely stunning run. Um, that's why I reckon we could see him finish fifth in driver standings, which uh, probably means there's a lot more shoeys on the menu. It has been a long time coming for Sergio Perez, but you cannot argue that he hasn't earned his place at Red Bull. A career of clinically pristine drives, some stunning racecraft, uh, scattering the podiums, and finally a well-won win at Sakir. Um, Re-energised and at a team that I hope will treat him with more grace and decorum than they did with Alex, Pierre, Daniel Kvyat. Uh, we should see a very strong uh, showing from Checo through the 2021 season. And I actually think that fourth might be a bit of a low sort of position or a low prediction for him. So uh, fingers crossed for good things from Checo Perez. And then moving up to third, I want this to be untrue. I want this to be so exceptionally untrue that Bottas comes in third on my predictions. I want to be proved wrong. I want to be proved very wrong indeed. I want Valtteri Bottas for World Drivers Champion. There are only two problems with that idea. Max Verstappen. To use the well-worn phrase meteoric rise is befitting for Max, a boy who won an F1 race before getting his road license. I think I'm correct in saying that. Uh, Red Bull is said to give you wings, but in this instance they took a child under their wing and are lining them up for a set of world titles. It is in the coming they just need to get everything together and take down uh, the one thing that is standing in their way, and that is the person who I've ranked as likely to win the 2021 World Drivers' Championship. That is, of course, Lewis Hamilton. He is on the form of his life at the moment. Wrapping up his title fight with three races to go last season was a show of dominance like no other and much less tense than trying to pass a slow move in Glocket and Lagos for the win overall. But there we go. That's Lewis Hamilton will probably win, or I predict he will win the 2021 World Drivers' Championship. So there you have it. My thoughts on how 2021 will pan out, results-wise at least. I don't know what's going to go on in all the races. That's quite tricky to predict. I've got more F1 content in the works at the moment, so be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any more of my nonsense. Is that good? Yeah? Alright, cheers.